In this video, I'll try to prove all these uh, compound angle formulas. Uh, basically, this can be proved uh, from one formula, which is cos A minus B. Okay, so let us get started. So here, I've drawn a unit circle. Unit circle has a radius of 1, and P is any arbitrary point having the coordinate x, comma y. So this is uh, pretty basic, but I'll go over the pretty basic stuff. So can I say sine theta? Sine theta is x over 1 because uh, sine theta is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So your opposite is y and your hypotenuse is 1, which implies y is nothing but sine theta. So your y coordinate can be written as sine theta. Same way, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Your adjacent is x and your hypotenuse is 1 because this is a unit circle, so the radius is 1. So that's why you can write x plus 1, which implies x is nothing but cos theta. And this is pretty basic that x coordinate corresponds to your cos theta and y corresponds to sine theta. So this x comma y can be rewritten as cos theta comma sine theta. Okay, now I have, this is a, again a unit circle with radius 1. So this is p sub naught. This is p sub naught. This is p1 making an angle of alpha with the positive arm of the x-axis and P2 is a point which is making angle beta with the positive arm of the x-axis. So if P1 makes an angle of alpha, the coordinate of P1 can be written as cos alpha sine alpha. Same way P2, the coordinates can be written as cos beta sine beta. Okay, here uh, if angle P sub naught O P1, so let me write angle P sub naught O P1 is alpha and angle P sub naught O P2 is beta. So P2 or P1 O P2 would be, which implies, I can say, angle P1 O P2 is alpha minus beta. So this angle, this angle P1 O P2 is alpha minus beta. Okay, so having done that, let us get started. Okay, so let me delete this. I think this is pretty easy. I want this space. I want to see the figure. So, using, now we, I'm going to use the course, uh, distance formula to write, to find the distance between P1 to P2 using distance formula. What can we write? Distance formula is nothing but again Pythagoras theorem, I can say P1, P2, the whole squared is equal to the difference between the x coordinates squared. So I'll write cos alpha, it can write cos beta minus cos alpha squared, or I'm writing cos alpha minus cos beta squared. You could have written other other way around as it is squared. It doesn't make difference if you write the other way around. Plus the difference between the y coordinates, which is sine alpha minus sine beta, the whole squared. Okay, so let us get, exp uh, therefore, this implies, therefore, P1, P2, the whole squared. Expanding this would be cos squared alpha uh, minus 2 cos alpha cos alpha cos beta plus cos squared beta. 
and I'm going to write the expansion of this bracket underneath this. So this will be sine squared alpha minus 2 sine alpha sine beta plus sine squared beta. So what is sine squared alpha plus sine squared beta? Uh, cos squared alpha plus cos squared sine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha sorry cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is this becomes 1 and sin, cos squared beta plus sine squared beta is also the basic uh, trig identity this is also 1 so I can rewrite now therefore p1 p2 the whole squared so this is 1 and this is 1 so this is 2 and I'm going to factor out this minus 2 out. So 2 minus cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So let us save this as a result. So I will call this a result. I'll call this result 1. Okay. Now I'm going to use the cosine rule or the law of cosine. I made a video on cosine rule you can refer to that so yeah this is uh, this is a cosine rule so say you have a any triangle ABC so this is side a opposite to angle a this is side this is this length this side has a length of B which is opposite to angle B and this length this side has a length of C opposite to angle C so cosine rule is a rule where you can find the length of one side when you have two sides and the included angle. So this is how you can remember. If you want to find A squared, you need B, C and angle A. You need two sides and the included angle. Angle A is included by between B and C. So the rule is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times cos A. So if you want to find B, you need C and A and the included angle which is B. So this is the cosine rule. So using the cosine rule in this triangle P1 O P2. Okay, so let me write. Using cosine rule. So using cosine rule or law of cosine. This is also called law of cosine using cosine rule. in triangle P1 O P2. I can say P1 P2 squared. So we can use cosine rule because we have two sides and the included angle. So OP OP1 we know is 1 and OP2 is also 1. And the angle included between OP1 and OP2 is alpha minus beta. So I can say P1 P2 squared is O P1 squared plus O P2 squared minus 2 O P1 times O P2 times cos alpha minus beta. Now O P1 and O P2 both are, have got unit uh, as a radius of one or the length of 1. Therefore I can say P1, P2 squared is 1 plus 1. This is 2 minus 2 times. This is again 1 and this is also 1. So this, this is 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 times 1 times 1 is 2 cos alpha minus beta. So this is a result 2. So result 1 is for P1, P2 squared. And result 2 is also for P1, P2 squared. Therefore, can I say from 1 and 2 or equating 1 and 2? Therefore, from 1 and 2, I can say 2 minus 2 cos alpha minus beta is equal to uh, 2 minus 2 bracket cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta okay so 
I will continue in the next video, but let us finish this off. So 2 and 2 gets cancelled and negative 2 and negative 2 also gets cancelled. So what is left is cross alpha minus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. Now let me also finish along with this the formula for cos alpha plus beta. Okay, so let me finish with that and I will continue with that in the next video. So if you want to find what is the compound angle formula for cos alpha plus beta, this is same as cos alpha take away negative beta because take away negative is positive. So you can use this formula again. So which we can say it's cos alpha cos negative beta plus sine alpha sine negative beta. Okay, now cos negative beta. So let me write this here. Cos negative beta is same as cos beta. I'll explain that. And the sine negative beta or minus beta is minus sine beta. Okay, now <coughs> this is the sine, this is the cosine curve and this is the sine curve. Now if you take say <coughs> any value, this is say, uh, okay, now let me give you an example. Okay, say cos you should be knowing cos 60 is half okay cos 60 is half so 60 this is say this is pi by 2 this is 90 so 60 comes somewhere yeah okay so cos this is a 60 degree okay and uh, this is half okay this is um, only so this negative 60 would come yeah i hope mm -hmm. you understand so if cos 60 is half, cos negative 60 is also half. Now, uh, because this is symmetrical over y-axis, your cos graph is symmetrical over y-axis, so your negative value and your positive value will be the same. So let me show you on a calculator. Suppose I've set this in degrees. So if you go cos 60, it is half. And if you go cos negative 60, would also give you half because it is symmetrical over y-axis. But if you take sine, sine 60, sine 30, we know sine 30, you know, sine 30 is again half. Sine 30 is half, but cos negative 30 would be negative half. So if you took sine negative 30, that would be negative one half. So let me show you that on the calculator. So if you do sine 30 is half, but sine negative 30, negative 30 would be negative 0 0.5. And here, this is also called an even function and this is an odd function. We're not going to much detail, but graphically you can understand that sine, so from this graphically also you can understand that cos alpha or cos negative alpha is same as cos alpha. But in sine graph, as it's an e odd function, sine negative alpha is minus sine alpha. Okay, so yeah, that's why I, uh, in the next step, I can write this like this. So this is, this becomes cos negative beta is cos beta. So this is cos alpha, cos beta and this minus beta will change this to minus sine alpha sine beta i'll prove the next two for the sine and the tangent in the next video